Hey there guys and welcome back to Alex Invest and wow we have another red day in the markets that's two days in a row now right but I'm not too worried about it because you know if we take a look here this is the uh, spider S&P 500 ETF trust right if we look at sort of the beginning of January here right this is uh, January 6th so beginning of 2021 we can see kind of where we've gone right and it's it's very to the upside here and we've had some big drops along the way here right end of January um, you know mid January to early January here and you know since kind of here we've just been going straight up essentially so we're at all we were at all time highs back here and we came and you know it just makes sense we have a bit of a retracement now after you know those continued continued gains that we've seen in the market uh, so again you know this is is the drop that we've seen in the past two days right and if we compare that you know to back here uh, this is the 26th to the 28th you know that was uh, about a four percent drop here and here we're at about a 1.5 percent drop so i'm not too worried about it and you know still we're on an uptrend in the markets and we're still on an uptrend you know in general here so again not too worried there but today i want to talk to you guys about three stocks and three different articles one in each of these stocks right to kind of see where we're going here and the first one is extra technologies then we're going to look at fuel cell energy and then we're going to look at plug power and so that's kind of where we're what we're doing today right and we're going to start right here so this is an article that came out on february 9th right and basically that's part of the reason why we've seen a bit of a run in XRO here. Uh, not the only reason, um, you know, on February 4th actually, and that's kind of when the run started here. Let's just look at that quickly here. So right here, what we can see is, um, you know, this is the fourth right here. And that's when, you know, uh, I believe it was CNBC or something came out with an article on XRO saying how they're a Canadian company doing what they're doing, right, based in Vancouver. And we started to see this run here, right? And then on the seven, which was right here, you know, we got uh, this this article, which we're going to go over right now, and we kind of continued our run to the upside here, right? And I said to you guys in the last my last extra video, once we cross over this sort of resistance level here, we're going to see our next kind of big leg up, right? And that's exactly what we saw here. Uh, so anyways, let's get back to this article here for a second, right? And I don't want to go into too much detail here because I want to cover all three of these stocks today. I think it's very important we do so. So anyways, XRO strengthens partnership with C Electric to accelerate development of XRO's battery control system, right? And we've talked about the battery control system quite a lot, right? That's their BCS. And uh, I'm quite bullish on that aspect of it. And of course, C Electric as well, right? Because they are quite a big company, quite an established company in sort of this field of delivery vehicles, right? So we can see C Electric to provide extra with electric ve delivery vehicles to showcase extra's battery control system, right? And again, this is really, really good stuff here, right? Because I've said uh, the battery control system and C Electric, right? Those are two, uh, those are going to be two big main drivers here, along with their extra coal driver, right? As well. And, um, you know, that's their extra coal driver again, that's for their class six and class eight trucks, right? Uh, when it's the 400V coil driver and that's what they're looking to implement in these C electric vehicles right and so really really good stuff here we're kind of again seeing us move here more into commercialization uh, within not only the coil driver here but also starting to see some things moving in the battery control system which is nice right and again you can go back to some of my other videos to kind of see what I think about the battery control system there but Anyways, there's a few other points here I wanted to say, uh, mention here. Um, this widened collaboration will significantly accelerate development of Extra's battery control system, right? We already just went over that. Um, and identify a key end of first life battery source. So again, they're starting to see here, right, when uh, these batteries are going to be done their first life and, and sort of be able to move on to their second life with this BCS and, and how long it, uh, these batteries can last, etc. right? And again here, Exros technology will continue to open new opportunities and applications that have cost prohibitive components on the market today, right? So again, they're moving to cost effectiveness and all this. We've talked about this before, but sort of the main thing here, again, is... Um, 
you know, the fact that, you know, this, this C electric BCS system here is a big, you know, driver and a major catalyst we can see sort of in XROs, again, vision towards becoming a leader in the power electronics sector here. And so this is really good. And another interesting thing to note here, and this is going to be the last thing, is XRO will invest $5 million into C electric by subscribing uh, 124,000 Series A preferred shares, right, at a price of $40. So again, XRO is going to have uh, a stake in C electric here and this is going to be good for us as shareholders of XRO as well I think because C electric a very big company very growing company right and uh, we're going to see you know when XRO sort of holds some of these shares and they're going to go up in value XRO is going to go up in value their partnership is going to make both of these companies go up in value right so that's all good there and those are kind of the main things I wanted to share with you guys for XRO, right? And now I want to go on to plug power and fuel cell energy, right? Because we've seen sort of some big sell-offs here lately as well in sort of plug and X or in sort of plug and F cell in the past few days, right? Down 8% again on plug power. And I mentioned yesterday on my Instagram and on my uh, Twitter that it would be a decent time to buy uh, because, you know, plug and fuel cell are both very oversold and we're going to go through why um of course the first reasons here are we can see on the macd and the rsi you know we're heavily oversold in plug we're heavily oversold in f cell here and um you know we can see that right down here and you know i'm surprised that we continue to see a downtrend in these stocks we can see here right around the 10th of february we've just been coming down heavily and plug two we can see that right 10th of february is right here and we've just had a big big sell-off since then so why is that and i'm not really sure i'm not really sure anybody really has the answer because plug and fuel cell both came out with actually quite good news lately and those are two of the things we're going to go over and sort of see why i'm still bullish on both of these and why i think they're oversold not just because of the chart and because of the macd and the rsi they're oversold there but uh you know they're they're undervalued here for the things for where they're going right as well and we've seen a sell-off in all hydrogen, right? It's not just uh, plug and fuel cell, but plug and fuel cell, they're my main holdings here as well. And they've kind of gotten hit the hardest here. And we'll start here with the news for plug power, right? And you know, what we see here is a similar deal like we saw for uh, SK Group in, in and plug power in that South Korean market, right? But here, uh, you know, it's for, you know, a more of a European market here in Iberia, right? And we can see uh, Akiona and Plug Power, right, to partner on establishing leading green hydrogen platform uh, for Iberia there. And uh, the joint venture aims for a 20% market share, right, right here in Spain and Portugal. Now, that's really good. A 20% market share is quite high, you know, especially when there's a decent amount of competition. But that's why they're coming here early, right? Again, Plug is a leader here. And, uh, you know, in their specific uh, industry here as well, they're going to be doing very well so this you know it came out on february 16th and you know the sell-off actually even got worse it, which is surprising to me right because this is the 16th right here and we did see a little bit of a pop and then since then just huge sell-off right onto the downside and again with news like this it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me here we're going to see a 50-50 joint venture, right? And um, again, I'm not going to go through this whole article because, you know, again, you guys should try and do your own research here. You can look at this article yourselves. Uh, I just want to go through some of the main points. This venture is going to combine Plug Power's best in-class technology and Akiona's status as the largest 100% renewable power retailer in Spain. So really good. You know, this is a powerful, powerful uh, partnership here as well. Maybe not as powerful as sort of that SK group deal you know that one's going to be much bigger than what we're seeing here and you know again you can go back to the video i did on that sk group deal uh if you want to see more about that but yeah it's it's going to be really good here right you know we can see uh plug power is an innovator and leader in green hydrogen 
uh, economy with over 40,000 fuel cell systems, 150 fueling stations deployed globally, uh, and dispensing more than 40 tons of hydrogen daily, right? And, you know, we already knew this. This is plug power stuff, right? And Akiona here as well, they've, they're doing some big stuff, right? Regenerative infrastructure solutions. We know that 10.5 gigawatts in 16 countries. Um, the company's clean energy output is plenty to power more than 7 million households worldwide, right? So we can really get an idea of how much 10.5 gigawatts are. And their goal here, right, to produce 1,000 tons of green hydrogen on a global basis by 2028. That's a lot of hydrogen, right? And again, their partnership here to build robust, cost-efficient green hydrogen ecosystem chains uh, and roadmap there. And again, we're seeing government intervention here, right? Just like we see uh, in the U.S. with Biden and, you know, just like we see in South Korea too, the government helping out here. Again, we're seeing the, the, the EU, right? Hydrogen strategy supports installing six gigawatts of renewable hydrogen electrolyzers in the EU and producing one million tons of renewable hydrogen by 2024. And again, Spain is set to play a leading role in that as well. So really good stuff here. Again, we're seeing support from the government, right? Uh, in, in everywhere across the world here, really. That's all good. And that's why th this is going to be a good partnership here as well, right? And whenever there's government backing here, you know, it's hard for these things to fail and so that's all i really wanted to show you guys there right and 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 again keep in mind this sell-off right with this news it doesn't make a lot of sense and i don't think the plug really was very overbought at the 63 level or 63 dollar level here and you know at the 50 dollar again oversold in my opinion and we can see that again from the macd from the rsi right but let's take a look at fuel cell energy here for a minute right because we see the same thing this massive sell-off and again today down 12.37 percent guys and to me this makes absolutely no sense whatsoever and we're going to go through exactly why and it's quite interesting here, right? Because this is sort of their investor presentation, right? Company update from February, 2021, right? So very recently here. And guys, please, I will link this in the description. Take a look through it. It just makes me so bullish again on fuel cell energy. But there's some really interesting things here to note, right? And the first one is this right here the multifaceted benefits of the fuel cell platforms, right? And we can see, first of all, avoided um, NOx here, right? And then avoided particulates down here and avoided CO2 right here, right? And what we're seeing is, again, the sure source biogas fuel uh, where, where they're using, you know, biogas to uh, power uh, or to create this hydrogen, right, with their fuel cells. Uh, is the most efficient here in, in all of these. But again, they're, they're sure source 4,000. They're, all of these are the most efficient here compared to, again, wind, compared to solar. solar. You know, what we see is avoided CO2 tons per year per megawatt, right? And I want you guys to remember that. Uh, let's say this, the sure source biogas fuel, is 6,000 uh, tons per per year per megawatt avoided CO2, right? And I, I want you guys to remember that because we're gonna see in a second how clean this technology is when you keep that in mind. Um, again, avoided particulates here and avoided NOx are both much better, right? Than solar, than wind, uh, and, and we can see that here. But I want you guys to just focus on this CO2. And here, this is key if you guys don't understand this yet, right? But fuel cell has power at the point of use, which essentially means that, um, you know, their stackable sort of fuel cell systems here can be installed, as we can see here, sort of in the back of, uh, you know, whatever, you know, is needing this power, right? So again, uh, th it doesn't require transmit this energy very far because it's already at, again, the point of use, right? And again, improves efficiency, reduces cost, right? And all this. And I've mentioned this in other videos, but I just wanted to reiterate, uh, and they work with all these, right? Nuclear, again, we talked about nuclear just the other day, right? That's going to be big. And 
it's the storage here of energy, which is so important, right? Batteries, yes, they can store energy and it's great, but the amount of energy that you can store when you're, you're converting it to hydrogen is just so much more. And that's why it's gonna be able to be used for solar, for nuclear, for thermal, for wind, right? Power grids, microgrids, everything, all these industries, right? End user, you can have them by your houses, offices. Again, enhances grid resiliency. Back to slide nine, right? What do we see on slide nine? Right here, right? Resiliency for pharma, resiliency in general here. Um, you know, uh, the, there was this article where there was some issues with, you know, uh, the cold, it being very, very cold, right? And hydrogen, you know, these fuel cells from F cell did not, were not affected at all by the cold. And, you know, batteries, they are affected by the cold again, right? And, you know, they're not as resilient as what we see with these hydrogen fuel cells. They just, they don't break as easily. They're not um, weather sensitive here and all this and again we can see here guys i'm not going to go through them all but look at this right compare these easy to cite you know low co2 emissions uh 24 7 energy output this is electrical grid right and this is you know and this is combustion based equipment solar and wind technologies and this right here is sure source fuel cells again with natural gas and biogas this is their carbonate fuel cells here that we're looking at not their um and we can see that right here not their solid oxide right but their carbonate fuel cells here where biogas and natural gas are used they're two different types here and they're both very important uh in their own respects right and we can just see low co2 emissions obviously wind and solar right uh are are really high here but so is our biogas right perfect no zero zero co2 emissions right and natural gas of course we have a bit of co2 emissions because it is natural gas there right uh low criteria emissions again right i mean obviously combustion and electrical grid are both really low for this and and that's kind of what we're trying to get away from here at the end of the day right but uh you know again we see both natural gas and biogas and fuel cell systems here so well and we can just go down the list and see how much better mm -hmm. you know if we tally them all up you know sure source fuel cells here and you know f cells fuel cells they're just more efficient, easier to cite in general, um, better backup power application, lower cost of energy, uh, or the same cost of energy, right? 24-7, uh, they can operate, right? 24-7 energy output. Look at how bad wind and solar is here, right? Because obviously we don't always have wind, we don't always have solar, but we can always have biogas and we can always have hydrogen uh, being produced from that 24-7, you know? Not just in the day, not just when the sun's shining, not just when there's wind, but 24-7. This is why hydrogen is so much better here you know and yes i believe in solar i believe in wind and and we're going to see like we see down here right uh, again we're going to see um you know the solid oxide platform here again be used with renewable like wind and solar right and what's going to happen is they're going to convert that with hydrogen fuel cells into hydrogen and that in turn is going to you know right why we have uh, green hydrogen and that in turn again is going to lead to more energy and what's so great about that is the storage again of this energy you can store it in hydrogen and and you don't have to worry about actually storing that electricity like you do with a battery and again we've just talked about some of the issues there with mm -hmm. storage of um y you know in a battery here of energy and biogas again that turns into green hydrogen guys that's fully fully green no co2 emissions no emissions right and 
this with their natural gas, right? This is going to be big too, right? They can do this with coal as well. And, and the CO2 capture here, uh, you know, makes it more efficient than those CO2 captures we have now. And we've talked about this in our previous videos before. So please do check those out. Um, I'll try and link them up if I can here. And they still have $1.1 billion of backlog, but we're going to go over some of the backlog here actually in, in a lower slide here. But they're developing a facility in Long Beach to support Toyota's operations. Really, really good stuff going on here, right? Again, we know to Toyota's working on sort of a hydrogen uh, or hydrogen cars here, right? And and uh, F Cell's looking to accommodate them mm -hmm. there for the hydrogen. And so, you know, again, we see nuclear here as well, right? So, so key here. Again, we can see how these two both have their own purposes here. These two different uh, uh, different fuel cells here and their uh, their platforms, right? each having such an important purpose here and now this look at this the megawatt capacity here right this is their operating generation portfolio here right so this is power that's already being produced again these numbers up here as well what do we see up here is for sure source biogas uh you know two to six thousand let's say six thousand tons per year per megawatt of co2 avoided so what is that? That's two to 6,000, you know, times 32.6 megawatts is how much decrease in CO2 we're going to get here. And again, here's some projects that they're currently working on another 40.7 megawatts. Again, government initiatives love to see it. We've talked about them, key drivers in incre increasing demand in Europe. And again, a plug, although, you know, they're they're in both the hydro plug and fuel cell they're both in the hydrogen industries right but really they work in separate aspects of this hydrogen industry right fuel cell again works in carbon capture works in these uh you know micro grids here and this this more you know a grid power clean power right and and uh these stackable sort of fuel cells and that's different where plug is working more on on you know uh hydrogen roadmap here in general right so really really good stuff there's room for both of these guys you know i think plug and fuel cell they're going to be the two main main leaders here uh in the hydrogen space and of course, you know, they're working with ExxonMobil. We know ExxonMobil, their price has been, you know, coming up to highs that we haven't seen in multiple years here. And, uh, you know, they're gonna help fuel cell energy here really be able to scale to commercialization to large scale here, right? We can see sort of uh, 2019 to 2021, um, we have this new two year joint development agreement, right? entered into to work towards large scale commercialization with um, Exxon Mobil. 2022 to 2023, what do we see? Medium scale ecosystems, right? And by 2024 and beyond, large scale deployment globally. And if you guys think they're just saying this, they're not. Remember, they're working with Exxon Mobil, one of the biggest you know, companies here in the energy space. And and they're going to get they're going to get there trust me guys they will get there a lot of this is from their their last kind of uh financial report right we can see their their revenue increase 17 percent or in, in in 2020 right revenue and their near completion of this one 8.8 .8 megawatts even you know i've got a lot of shares in this company but even i'm thinking at this price why am i not picking up more fuel cell energy you know, especially after reading this, right? Again, regulatory support worldwide. We always talk about this. We got Biden, you know, uh, as well. Um, of course, uh, you know, new White House administration, they mentioned it even right there, but balance sheet looking great, right? We went over that all uh, already. And here, you know, I mentioned this in my video where we went through uh, FCL's financial statement, how I would like to see sort of them uh, decreasing their backlog a little bit. And that's exactly what they're working on, right? 2.5% decrease here, there, but also uh, 
they are, again, you know, focusing on continuing progress against project backlog here, right? They want to decrease that project backlog. And that's why I put a big check mark here because it's exactly what we want to see from them here. And again, you know, they're doing well. They're not going anywhere. You know, they've got a bunch of cash uh, and, and just going to keep growing, right? Double digit co um, compound annual growth rate there, you know, their, their future gold positive um, earnings before interest, tax appreciation, amortization. We know they're not there yet, right? Uh, but they will get there, guys. And I've said this before, their CEO, he's a very, very smart guy. And he's trying to kind of stay uh, in sort of this loss for as long as he can so he can kind of expand as much as he can. Uh, you know, before these funding awards kind of stop, right? Because eventually they will stop it. They, they're they taking advantage of them while they can. So important here, so important. So that's really it for that article and what, or that uh, investor presentation there, right guys? And wow, so much good stuff in there, guys. I can't tell you, I read that uh, the first and, and when I first read it, and it could just got me even more bullish on uh, fuel cell energy, guys. What they're doing here, it's it's crazy. And, you know, I highly suggest, you know, you do a little bit of a deeper dive into that as well, because there's a lot of things in there uh, that, you know, we didn't mention here now because, you know, we're already at a very, very long video. In fact, I may uh, cut this into two videos here even. So... Anyways, that's going to do it for the video today, guys. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment as always. And other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.